Forgive me here, but I'm trying to be a little efficient, streamline some things because of the timing of Rampage actually being the first AEW show of the week on Friday night and Dynamite being on Saturday night. I don't feel the need to do two separate reviews, nor frankly do they deserve them. So you're going to get this shit all mashed together. This is a Rampage and Dynamite review for this week. Um, yeah, because especially Rampage. Like that show wasn't good. All this shit talk about last week and ratings and demos and head-to-head -head who won. Everybody was a fucking loser in that spot. I hope everybody can see that. This head-to-head -head competition, it's stupid. Nobody wins. Stop it. Oh, they beat him in the key demo. And the numbers still suck. Oh, but the WWE beat him in overall viewers. Just like the key demo, technically, total viewers is not the most important thing. And it still doesn't matter because that number still sucked. I can go on and on and on. So hopefully this week was going to be a little bit more of like each team manages their own shit, worries about putting out the best that they possibly can. And I certainly hope this isn't the best that Tony Khan and AEW could put out. Um... And it all started with the opener. I just soured my mood for the rest of the night with this show. I am not here to say that Orange Cassidy is stupid. I am not here to say that Orange Cassidy should just be treated like a Joe. I don't think he should be as much of an in-ring competitor as he is. But here's the reality. Orange Cassidy is one of the best ratings draws they have. Orange Cassidy is absolutely one of the biggest eyeball drawers when it comes to their YouTube channel. Fact check me. Look it up. Sort their channel by most popular videos and see how many times Orange Cassidy's in the top 5, top 10, top 15, top 20. And when it comes to the YouTube views, nobody, and I mean nobody, delivers them like Orange Cassidy. And you can generate revenue off of that, so you know, it's a way to draw money. So I'm not here to say that Powerhouse Hobbs should have just absolutely smashed him. I just think it's really stupid that... You see Team Taz do two things. One, either fight each other, or two, lose to every fucking buddy else. That's dumb. And here's an opportunity here. You've got Orange Cassidy with the injured ribs. You have so many different finishes you could have fucking done. But no, no, no. We still got to make Powerhouse Hobbs look stupid so that way Orange Cassidy can beat him. I thought Tony Khan come out and talk about wrestling truth in the Anglo-American way. This fucking all egg white ass tournament. And you wonder why some fans are pissed off about Power Hobbs, Ho Powerhouse Hobbs losing like this. They should be pissed. This is fucking stupid. You have the tinier guy with the rib injury still finds a way to win. Meanwhile, Hobbs actually has outside interference to help him. You couldn't figure out a better way to fucking do this? And if you wanted to insist on o Orange Cassidy winning here, then there were still other ways to eliminate a powerhouse Hobbs that don't look this stupid. This was stupid. And it needs to be called out to task. Of course, the fucking cult of personality people around Tony Khan will make all the spinning excuses they want to and can possibly drum up, but this is a thing where you just can't do that. This is absolute bullshit. You've got Penta El Cerro getting attacked by FTR, who had just recently stolen away the AAA Tag Championships from the damn Lucha Brothers. And again, who gives a shit? Stop giving airtime to other feds and other belts. It's not helping you. It's not helping them. It's stupid. Stupid. It's that type of Mark Fantasy bullshit where fans say, oh, that'd be great. Or did it? And it's not. Focus on the goddamn AEW Tag Team Championships. The number one thing you should be worrying about the most, this is a problem with AEW, is them goddamn selves. Stop trying to do business with other companies right now because it's not giving you a benefit. You also are not providing them any benefit. Stop mentioning WWE and worrying about WWE. Folks, focus all of your energies, all of your time, all of your resources, and are making you the best you possibly can. AEW Women's Championship, Anna J versus Dr. Britt Baker was, you know, passable at best. You know, Ty Conti coming out to help in uh, protect her friend Anna Jay. You know, Ty Conti versus Britt Breaker is going to be that women's title match at full gear. And I guess I'm here for it. Uh, but the main event. 
Pac versus Andrade El Idolo. First, Andrade sitting there talking shit about F-U-W-W-E. F-U for what? They gave your lame ass the platform to be in front of a larger audience. They paid you well, I'm sure of that. Like, why would you feel the need to burn the bridge? Like, sometimes people just don't think. And they refuse to take accountability for their own actions. They refuse to look in the mirror and see their own shortcomings. Because maybe the reason Andrade wasn't pushed more in WWE is because he's not that fucking good. Please tell me what's so special about him. Like, when you get him in the ring, he is solid. I'll give him that. But lots of guys are solid in the ring. What the fuck is that anymore? That's not a way for you to stand out or be different. But either way, it doesn't fucking matter. There's actually a story here between Pac and Andrade. And instead, this was all just to serve up fodder to build up to Malachi Black and Cody Rhodes' match the next night on Dynamite. Fuck these guys' business. It's all about Cody Cena's business. Ha <laughs> ha! I see what you're doing, AEW. I see what you're up to, Cody. You were trying to present him as a fucking baby face. And maybe that dumb dick crowd there bought into it. But I guarantee you the next night on Dynamite, they sure the hell weren't. And they didn't. So yeah, you took a main event that actually had some type of story behind it and threw it away just so you could use it as a prop to advance Malachi Black and Cody Rhodes. The opener was fucking dumb because you have an injured... Orange Cassidy beating Powerhouse Hobbs, who has interference and help on the outside. Like, they do not deserve credit for this show, and the ratings reflect that. The numbers weren't good, and they didn't deserve to be good. Make your excuses about baseball or other 300 goddamn excuses people want to make. The reality is, this show sucked this week, and it got a rating that is commensurate with their level of suck. Now, on to Dynamite. Once again, Brian Danielson knows how to do politics. He's America's best, most effective politician, and it's not close. How could you be a real Brian Danielson fan if you wouldn't vote for him for president in 2024? You want stuff to happen, you want stuff to change, you want to get stuff done? He can get it done. I mean, there is no tomorrow. The future is now. You got to push these young lions like Brian Danielson and Dustin Rhodes, and by God, you're going to give them a ton of time. You're going to let them open the show, as Brian Danielson knows that's going to be the most rate, highest rated segment of the night. And not only that, he's going to make sure he gets out first, so he gets the absolute most amount of eyeballs he possibly can. And he's going to tell Dustin Rhodes how great this match is and get in a bunch of stuff, and then, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be choked out until you pass out because that's going to look good for you. Brian Danielson almost brings a tear to my eye. Uh, but Brian Danielson wins in the All Egg White Tournament, and he advances to face somebody in the next round. We'll talk about that in a moment. And MJF needs to be careful. Sting was annoyed clearly last night. He wanted to be at Bound for Glory. He wanted to face CM Punk. Impact Wrestling fucked it up, AEW fucked it up, and CM Punk is a chicken shit. And MJF also really needs to be careful because nobody's buying into this shtick that he was behind the attack on Darby Allen. MJF, you are the puppet. Sting is the icon puppet master. Don't ever forget that. We all know <laughs> who is the real brains behind that attack. Be careful biting off more than you can chew. Because that young lion sting still knows a thing or two about getting it done in the ring, MJF. Be careful. Be careful, bitch. I, I do need to know this, though. For this TBS women's title on Dynamite, or the tournament, whatever, why in the fuck does Penelope Ford keep getting match time? She is not good. Anybody that tells you that this match was good is a fucking idiot or has absolutely zero standards. It was sloppy. There were multiple botches, multiple slow-ass moving movesets. It was terrible. And we need to stop glancing over this shit because, hey, they did one move. It ignores the six other fucking botches that you saw. Like, this is pathetic. This is ridiculous. And that type of excusing and justification and deflecting needs to stop. There's no business for Penelope Ford to be getting this much run, this much time. Stupid. And then Ruby having to beat her with a roll-up? Fuck that! No, it's not any story. It's fucking stupid! This is like Bobby Fish getting this type of time to face Anthony Green. 
Why are you giving this TV time to Bobby Fish when you got so many other goddamn people on the roster who could probably do more with this television time? You're giving it to a mid-40s Bobby Fish who brings you nothing that you don't already have in abundance. Fucking dumb. I did like the touch, though, of having CM Punk come out to help out Anthony Green and not having his music hit. Like, having him run out and have the crowd slowly start to realize this is CM Punk. Like, that looked cool. That felt cool. That sounded cool. Lots of props to Tony Khan on doing that. Because sometimes the always having somebody's music hit just feels kind of overproduced. It feels phony and fake as fuck. This felt rear, realer. And we can totally understand why CM Punk is pissed at Bobby Fish. you goddamn right, Philip. If anybody's going to bury the young talent in AEW, CM Punk says, It's going to be me! How dare Bobby Fish bury Anthony Green before you have a chance to do so? You now have to take that anger out on Bobby Fish! Randy, do you really want to see this, though? Like, the whole premise to me should be CM Punk beats all the young talent because he wants to show everybody he's still the best. He thinks this generation of wrestling is a joke. And... He's just beating everybody so that way when he gets his shot at the AEW World Championship and he ultimately wins, there will be no challengers because everybody will be knowing that they can't beat him. Like, there's a story in and of itself that continue down this path and it's whack, whatever. Um, the other uh, Eliminator Tournament match, Eddie Kingston and Lance Archer, it started off intense and it started off great. And then, of course, you've got the big moonsault where Lance Archer lands on the top of his fucking head. I could go debate all day long about whether a dude like this should be doing a spot like that in a match like this. No, we fucking shouldn't, to be clear. It's dumb. I want giant guys or bigger guys in wrestling to stop working like goddamn cruiserweights. Stop taking unnecessary risks that are not called for here. Uh, so that is dumb. I'm not going to totally rage too much about the fact that this match didn't immediately stop when it was obvious to everybody watching that he was fucked up. But AEW has a problem with this. This is not the first time this has happened. This has happened a number of times where you've had a talent clearly concussed or clearly not right, and they haven't immediately stopped it. They haven't immediately sent for the doctors, any of that shit. And to say, well, they, they waited a moment or two and the, the, the roll-up finished. You don't even need to do that. Get him out of the ring, fucking count him out. Sit there and say, you know what? He can't continue. Winner is Eddie Kingston. There's so many goddamn things you could have done here other than the bullshit that you did. Oh, it's supposed to be so much different than WWE. Then you know what? Actually act like your wrestler safety matters to you. We know it doesn't. You're full of shit as a company. You've proven that time and time again. But this was an, a chance to get it right. And you just did it. So Eddie Kingston advances and he's going to take on Brian Danielson next. And instead of talking about that, people are talking about Lance Archer getting hurt and... Him still trying to continue the match in any way, shape, or form. The promo segment between Men of the Year and Sammy Guevara was actually really good. Setting up to Guevara and Ethan Page next week. Like, this was good. More of this, please. And then, shit, Jungle Boy versus Brandon Cutler. This was a surprise of the night to me. Not that he squashed Brandon Cutler. Like, Jungle Boy is a beast when it comes to his booking right now. Like, he's going to always be taken care of very well here. And he should be squashing a joke-ass wrestler like Brandon Cutler. But he grabbed the mic like a live mic in real time. And used his mouth to emit words. Calling out somebody else from the elite. And eventually Adam Cole comes out. And the place freaking erupts. And even when Jungle Boy is eventually getting beat down by Adam Cole and the Bucks. You know, the crowd's chanting for Luchasaurus. Like, yeah. You know, I wonder sometimes how much... The Jurassic Express is truly over just because of their music, especially when you see the crowd doing this. But the visuals of that are stupendous. I kind of wish they would have had Luchasaurus come out. But I understand what they're trying to sell it. He's a fucking dinosaur! He's evolved to last over 65 million years. I think he could take one beat down on one table shot. God damn it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because just like Rampage was all about one thing and only one thing fucking mattered... At the end of the day, that's all it was about Dynamite 2. Don't kid yourself. The only thing that mattered on this show ultimately was Malachi Black versus Cody Rhodes because it involved that fucking egomaniac, that psycho Cody Rhodes. Holy shit. <laughs> 
Sure, the match was intense and brutal at times, which is exactly what it was supposed to be. No issues with that. Got both guys bleeding. Appropriate level of story to justify getting some color. Again, no issue with that. Actually, a bit refreshing when you see that sometimes. Take can add an element, add another layer to the story. But you had to know this was coming. You had to know that this egomaniac is so caught up in his own insecurities and so full of his own bullshit that no matter how much he tries to use Arn in the Glock gimmick to help him out and to give him love from the fans, the fans do not want to cheer this asshole because they know he's a fucking asshole. They know what his whole deal is. They know what he's about. And yet this asshole continues to insist and persist. If there was ever going to be a time to even maybe do a double switch or at least do some type of heel switch, here was the fucking time. And no, of course, the delusional ass founder just had to make sure that he was trying to position himself as a babyface and the crowd totally resented it. They booed the fuck out of him. And they should have. Because this is stupid. And what's ultimately stupid about it is they've already wrestled twice, now it's the third time, it's hashtag LOL, Cody Cena wins, of course he was eventually going to get it back. Of course they had to do some type of self-serving redemption angle bullshit for him. Of course he couldn't let Malachi Black be the better off for it. And of course this asshole still thinks he's a fucking baby face. Like it is astoundingly stupid to me. We can have different opinions on different things when it comes to wrestling and so forth. Cody Rhodes and whether he's likable or not, there is no logical debate. He is a piece of shit. People know he's a piece of shit. Stop pretending like he's not a piece of shit. And Cody Rhodes should most importantly acknowledge that he is a piece of shit and use that, damn it, as an opportunity to be the biggest star he's ever been, to make the most money he's ever done, to help AEW reach heights that it's never reached and it's not going to reach under its current ways. Oh, he said he would never win the title. Bullshit! He should leverage political power play to put himself in the goddamn title scene. What better way to do it? It's just like so many things with the current product with AEW. It's just, it's off, it's weird, it doesn't make fucking sense. But you had to know this was coming, didn't you? I mean, did you really think Malachi Black was going to win this match? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that was kind of punk ass by Cody in this one, and not, admittedly, was why didn't you use a goddamn pedigree? <laughs> Could have been an homage to God. <laughs> but Dynamite was better than Rampage. Rampage was drizzling shit. Dynamite had some good stuff on it. Um, but yeah, that finish. <laughs> LOL, Cody wins. <laughs>